In this week's SME feature, we speak to co-founder and CEO of MM Inside Powered Solutions, William Mbofu. William, take us through the company's core business. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Firstly, um, to start off with the business, essentially what Inside Solutions does is we design and manufacture smartphone and tablet devices. But um, to go into detail, the company is divided into three specific models. Your first one being your retail clients, which is your everyday person. Second being business clients. And then third being institutional clients, which is like your department of education. Now, with the retail clients, that's where the smartphones are mostly centered around. But right now, our business is mostly focused on providing solutions for companies and for the department of education, which is where the tablet comes into play. So essentially, we provide different solutions for, let's just say, for business clients. People would come to us with a specific request, like they would want um, their tablets to do certain things or those, they would want a certain system integrated into their tablet, and that's what we do. So from scratch, we we'll design a new tablet for them, put a certain system that they would like for it, and then that's how we provide it. That's just for business. But then for, for a department of education, that's where I'm really mostly focused on right now. Because we don't just only provide a tablet by itself, you know. We fully integrate a tablet system within a school. So some schools have different resources depending on, you know, what level of school, you know, you're working with. So per se, you know, would, let's just say a school from, from scratch, you know, would provide the tablet, data packages, which would be inclusive of maybe Wi-Fi, or actually putting a SIM card within the tablet because they're dual SIM equipped. Mm -hmm. Plus, we provide security measures. If the school allows people to take their tablets home, then we provide the tracking mechanism on the tablet. Or if they don't allow them to take it home, we just provide a nice security system where they can keep the tablets, you At know? At the school. At the school, yes. And then besides that, we also do provide training for the staff and the students for the first three months just to you know make sure everybody fully understands how to use the tablet and the training is also um, categorized between when i say for the staff i mean also for it for the whole it department so that everybody kind of you know fully integrating a tablet system within the schools that's where our core goal is and um yeah that's inside solution so far now you guys are in your early 20s how did you come about starting a company of this nature uh, I mean, to start things off, um, I guess I started the company with uh, Parish and Moodley. We both were at uh, UCT together. Um, we're in the same res. We used to just talk a lot with each other, you know, exchange ideas. And I mean, we came to a certain point where we realized we actually both want the exact same thing for the future and we both want to have a change within South Africa. So that's essentially when we, you know, start exchanging ideas. What can we do? How can we do this? And I mean, we looked at the cell phone market and we saw that smart devices are something that need to be integrated fully within just, even in, within the learning environment and just within daily use. It's cheaper, it's much more easier to use and it's more efficient. So just by looking in the past, you know, you could say about 10 years ago, you would see that you know black and white phones were like the thing. I mean, maybe the first color phone might have come out then. And um, you know, that was something very exciting and they were very expensive though. Okay. And then now five years ago, you know, smartphones started coming into play, but they were still very expensive, very few. People hadn't really adopted them yet. And as we look at it right now, more people use smart devices, you know? And then just so if you look in the next five years, 10 years, you can see that smart devices are going to be used. I can maybe make a, I don't want to make the promise too much, but I would like to make the promise that in the next 10 years, you will not be able to buy or use a feature phone. Mm. So, I mean, we told ourselves there's no reason why South Africa can't be part of the revolution or at least lead the production within it. You know, we don't need to constantly have to, you know, import all of our means of production. We can actually lead it ourselves. And that's when the design process started with pollution. And then um, just a year later, Mandler came into play, Mandler Minger. He, um, I mean, the skills that he produces as well for the company, he does all the marketing for it, you know, the brand designing and everything. Cause there were certain skills that we, we didn't have ourselves, you know, we, I mean, I studied BCom economics and finance, Perusian studied financial accounting, CA route, and Mandler studied um, 
PPE, I mean, sorry, uh, politics, uh, philosophy, and international relations. I mean, it almost seems like it has nothing to do with um, technology. Totally. <laughs> but um, what we did realize is that the most important thing is about building a team of people. So behind us, it's not just, you know, us three. There's a team that backs us, and, you know, we do have our technical team as well that helps mm -hmm. us, you know, design what we need. And what we don't know, we just learn. Yeah. So. Yeah. I want to speak about the technical side of things. Production, how do you handle that? Uh, what does your technical team do? Do you guys build this from scratch or are you outsourcing? Okay, currently what we do is um, we design the products ourselves, you know, from scratch. You know, we design what certain uh, specifications would want within the products. And then we import our parts from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Currently, especially when, um, when it comes to big dealings, you know, we don't have the um, resources yet to fully produce everything here, but we're hoping maybe by next year or um, you know beginning of next year would fully be able to start producing and manufacturing the whole process here. Because mm. currently we just get our parts from Hong Kong and then we finish off the assembly and the testing here within South Africa. Would you say that is a challenge, not having to do most of the production here, having to use Hong Kong as a link to what you do and what you produce? Um, it's no, it's it's quite frankly, it's actually a little bit easier currently because, you know, the manufacturing plant already has the means and they already understand the process. Yeah. So I do know that, you know, when we do start the manufacturing plant here, it's going to take quite a lot in terms of training and whatnot, you know, because I mean, even some of the biggest companies in the world, you know, iPhone and whatnot, I mean, Apple, you know, they get all their stuff produced abroad because, you know, it's, it does take quite a lot to, um, to start producing everything you need here, but it's a goal that we're working towards. Mm. Yeah. Interesting goal and quite impressive to say. And um, now being young entrepreneurs, what do you make of the current space of the SME sector of entrepreneurship in South Africa? Uh, I would say currently right now, it's, it's huge, you know. The only thing that needs to happen is that entrepreneurs and, you know, young people need to realize that there is support out there and that the opportunity is there you know to start your business and actually you know carry it on you know you don't have, you don't just have to stop at the idea generation you know you can actually go much further because there are support structures there's so many different government agencies that provide mentorship you know they provide you know funding as well i mean for us ourselves you know we received so much mentorship from Yvonne Chaka Chaka, you know, she's really been helping us and mentoring through the whole process. So, I mean, the only thing I would say is that, I mean, the space is so huge right now and this is the time for, you know, entrepreneurs and young people to actually start, you know, their businesses and carry things on. Yeah. Now, a lot of people will, in the SME sector, in entrepreneurship, usually say that funding is a bit of a stumbling block in starting. How did you guys go about getting funding for what you have so far? Okay, so to start things off, really, funding is not as difficult as people would say, you know? It's literally all about you putting together the right plan. Now, that's where the work comes into play. That's where you have to put in your work, you know? It's not just about having a good idea because I believe everybody's creative and everybody actually does have the potential to have a great idea, you know? But it's about putting in the work after that. And that's strictly all about the paperwork now because it's just about being able to not convince, but, you know, make someone trust in your dream, you know, and trust in your reality that you're trying to portray. So that means putting together a good business plan that puts all, you know, every single aspect in terms of your marketing plan, your full process, your research, your financials and everything. And with that, you can go anywhere with it. You can go to any investor, you can go to any financial, you know, uh, institution and tell them that, listen, this is my business plan. And they should not have a reason not to fund you if it's fully, you know, if, it, if, if you back yourself that much, then you really should put the work into, you know, your paperwork. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it makes the funding much easier because I mean, most big entrepreneurs out there, most of the big companies out there, they didn't fund themselves. I mean, it would have been crazy if we had to fully fund ourselves <laughs> as well. I mean, this is a technology company. I mean, we're just young students, but yeah. And so far, are the products out there, how soon are they going to be available to the public, to the business sector? Where are you guys right now with the products? Okay, well, the products currently, they are available. 
especially um, with um, business clients and the educational clients, you know, they are all available. We're currently working on different pilot programs to, um, you know, pilot the, um, the tablets within schools. Um, hopefully by the end of this year, you'll see a couple of schools will be using our tablets. And um, yeah, I mean, you can still order the um, devices online. So, yeah. At what cost? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the smartphones retail for 3,000 Rand. But just to say a few of the specifications of them, you know, it works on an Android system, so which is like your Android 4.4 KitKat. And, um, you know, it has a 13 megapixel back camera, mm -hmm. HD screen, five megapixel front camera. I mean, just a few of these specifications show that it competes, you know, on a competitive level with your big brands. But um, any other device that has the same specifications would retail for at least 6,000 and above. Yeah. So, I mean, we offer it for half the price and even less. So, and then Tablet? the tablets, they retail for 3,500. But that comes inclusive of, um, you know, a keyboard. Mm -hmm. So that comes with inclusive of a keyboard, which is also a cover. And one of the big differences that we have with our brand, which kind of differentiates us, you know, is um, the USB capability. Mm -hmm. So essentially what that is, is you can plug in a USB device into your tablet and use it like a normal computer. Copy any files, Microsoft Office, Excel, PowerPoint, videos, music, photos, whatever it may be. Copy them easily, just like a normal computer. It almost eliminates having to ever use a computer, which is something quite different. It's a nice kick. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to talk about your logo. You guys have chosen uh, the continent. Yeah. Take us through this. I mean, one of the big things we do believe is, I mean, we're trying to instill the f true African identity with our devices, you know. We're still trying to show that we are still a proudly African company, you know. Trying to show at least, you know, give some sort of motivation that you don't always have to outsource everything. You don't always have to, you know, look abroad to the bigger companies per se. You know, there's no reason why Africa can't lead its, you know, means of production. So, I mean, that's really one of the big reasons why we put the African logo there. It's a beautiful logo. Lastly, where to for MM Inside Powered Solutions? Where do you guys want to go from here? Uh, I mean, I mean, we do have different plans, you know, for, I mean, five years, 10 years, <laughs> 20, yeah. 50 years. But I um, mean, to start things off, we'd like to see our tablets being used all around South Africa, just as a starting point, you know, that will further allow us to start penetrating, you know, the rest of Africa. We don't just want to work within South Africa or just Africa, you know, we want to put ourselves at a global standing point, you know? And that's mostly where the technology comes into play. You know, this is just a starting point with the, the tablets and the smartphones, but want to expand in technology, you know, start bringing in 3D printing. You know, there's so many different other things we want to incorporate within the company, mm -hmm. but it's all different timelines, but. Wonderful. That was William Bofu, the co-founder and CEO of MM Insight Solutions.